Today I'm going to speak with you about Parkinson's disease, about animal model for Parkinson's disease, and what we've learned from this animal model in order to treat better our human patient. Parkinson's disease is one of the most common neurological disease. We believe that it is affect about 1% of the population above 60 years. And with the increased life expectation in Europe, Israel, United States, we are going to get more and more patients with Parkinson's disease, and therefore it's critical to improve our ability to treat this disease. We know about Parkinson's disease for about 200 years. It was discovered by James Parkinson, an English physician, who treats three patients, and another two he noted on the market. It then described the main feature of the disease, which are akinesia, which is reduced amount in of voluntary movement, rigidity, muscle stiffness, and tremor. We know today that this disease is the result of degeneration or the death of dopaminergic neuron in the brainstem of this patient. The question that we have been asking ourselves, what is the relationship between the degeneration of the dopaminergic neuron and the clinical sign that we do see in Parkinson's disease? The solution to this question came from another story, which is the MPTP neurotoxin. We've been able to use this neurotoxin in order to mimic the human disease in animal model. And this animal model enables us to understand that after the generation of the dopaminergic neuron in the midbrain, we get increased activity in some part of the basal ganglia, especially in the subthalamic nucleus, which is a small nucleus below the thalamus that provide excitatory drive to the basal ganglia. In 1990, we published that we are able to cure Parkinson's disease by inactivation of the subthalamic nucleus in animal model of the disease. Three years later, Professor Benabid and colleagues in Grenoble, France, took this idea to the human clinic. Since then, in Europe, United States, Israel, and all over the world, more than 35,000 operations have been done. So the surgery that we uh, perform nowadays for uh, Parkinson's disease for the appropriate patient uh, is uh, to implant um, a small electrode like the one I'm holding right now and in an, a very precise part of the brain, usually within what's called the subthalamic nucleus. And the way that we do that, we advance a very, very fine microelectrode in very small steps of uh, a few microns at a time and we record the electrical activity of the cells on a computer and at that time the neurophysiologist in our institution that's Professor Bergman sit and help us uh, verify that these are indeed the signals of our target nucleus where we want to go inside the brain. When we found that nucleus and we found the responses to the uh, cells and we do that by moving the patient's arm patient's leg, the hand, the wrist, the elbow, looking for cells that respond to movement. Once we found that target, we will then stimulate and we look for the responses in terms of reduced rigidity, reduced tremor and faster movements that the patient can actually demonstrate real time on the operating table because the operation is done with the patient awake and without medication. Once we found the best location, we will then implant the permanent electrode and fasten it and then we do exactly the same procedure on the other side. And then that's connected up to a pacemaker device which is usually implanted in the anterior part of the chest wall and connected up by a wire that connects between the pacemaker and the electrode in the head and everything of course is underneath the skin and you don't see anything externally. The patient's allowed to recover and then approximately one week or 10 days after the surgery, we bring the patient back to the outpatient clinic and we start to program this pacemaker with an external magnetic computer. And we see the reactions of the patient to the stimulation and we change the stimulation according to the response to the stimulation such that we can make the patient 
function better in terms of his stiffness, in terms of his slowness, and of course in terms of the tremor. And in that way we can also change the medication. Usually within about a month or two months after the surgery the patient is pretty well balanced. And then we only need to see the patient maybe once every six months for a general checkup. As experience has uh, grown, um, we've realized that this procedure of implanting electrodes and what has become known as deep brain stimulation surgery can be good not just for tremor, which is where it started, and not just for Parkinson's, which is what it's ma used for mainly nowadays, but also for other movement disorders such as dystonia, which is a disease that we see most often in children. And we're learning that it may well be very good for other diseases too, including intractable depression, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, and maybe other problems too. Of course, this day we are looking for the future. One possibility, and this is the most attractive possibility, is to prevent Parkinson's disease. We are looking for a neuroprotection method, we are looking for a way that will prevent the degeneration of dopaminergic cell. Of course, there are many, many more questions to be asked, many, many more answers to be found, but we believe that this proper combination of animal experiment with good model of the human disease and careful testing of our idea, first in the animal model, then when it's successful, going back to the human theater, this is the way to get future advance in the treatment of this common disease.